Mr. Baseless Yupin has an episode 7 cut content of Classroom of the Elite Season 3. Let's see what he has to say. Classroom of the Elite Season 3 Episode 7 is here. And this... Look at this dude. Look at this dude. I, I, the fact that he was texting so hard in the beginning of the episode and people were like, Ooh, who's he texting? Who's he texting? And I was like, is it Arisu? There's no shot it's Arisu, right? This dumbass isn't texting Arisu. It was Arisu! She's giving him details, right? Right? Maybe it could be Kushida, actually. It could be Kushida that he's communicating to because Kushida helps spread the, you know, wh whatever Arisu's plan was to get people to turn on Anakoji. But just funny to me that Yamagata may be you know, texting Arisu right now. It's like, what the fuck? He's here. And this is easily the best episode this season in terms of an best episode this season. <sighs> Do you guys agree? In terms of what? In terms of what? Adaptation. In terms of an adaptation. Okay, okay. Objectively, if we're talking about stuff from the light novel being translated into the anime, one for one and stuff like that, then I can't really give my judgment because I'm anime only, right? Only adapting around 50 pages. But. Only 50 pages of the volume! Before, it was like 190 or some shit, right? It's also the episode that worries me the most about the future of this Why? season. Why? So stick around till the end of the video if you they're, wanna they're know worried? why this episode worries me so much. Why? Also, leave a like on this video as it lets me know how much you guys love these videos. Y'all know what to do. Please go give Mr. Baseless Yupin a like and a sub to his and channel. consider subscribing for more Classroom of the Elite content. With all that out of the way though, Let's finally dive into all the cut content for this episode. So the first moment with cut content is actually during the Hirata conversation. Oh. Their conversation was slightly longer in the light novel. Plus the anime also skipped all of Kyo's thoughts, especially Kyo thinking that he wants to help Hirata even though there's not much he can do. Really? I thought maybe he wants to break Hirata down so he can use him better. I don't know, that's, that's the usual formula, right? Just break people down to the fucking ground. So that then they can be perfect tools afterwards. But they have been slowly building up Hirata for some arc in the future, right? And again, he's like, what is he again? Is he the Ace of Hearts? Was he the Joker of Hearts? He's something of Hearts in the anime opening. And they intentionally place specific characters to kind of like refer to their role in the game. And like Hirata, they're building towards his arc. We don't know what his defect is, but we'll get to know pretty soon. And... He, like, he's getting more tired. He's getting more stressed, right? He's, he's, he's at the tipping point, man. Though he does suggest to Hirata about trying to think about who should stay instead of thinking about who they need to cut off. Even though Kyo thinks that Hirata won't be able to do that because of his personality. Yeah. Plus, I think that it would be so interesting if Hirata might even self-sacrifice himself so that no one else gets expelled, only he gets expelled for the sake of the class because... That might be going a little bit too far, but his tendencies, his personalities throughout season one and two and even three, right? It's always being the fucking doormat for everybody. As long as the class is unified, he doesn't matter if he is stepped on, right? So would he even go as far to even think about like getting like getting himself expelled for the sake of the class? I'm not sure because then he, he's just out of the game, right? Because we have extra context as to why he's like this because... Okay, that scene was hilarious, though. <laughs> it looked like he was about to do a Manabu fucking palm strike on Suzune to the elevator right here. Why he's like this, because of his monologue from the beginning of this volume, which the anime cut out. Yeah, what was and the monologue? the conversation ends with Kyo asking Hirata about his dating life. Hirata <sighs> answers that he did get confessed to by one person, but he's currently not looking to date anyone. Is that Mi-chan or what? Kyo wonders if that person was Mi-chan, but he doesn't want to pry into their life. There's a couple scenes where Michan was kind of looking at Hirata being worried, right? And even before, Michan asked, like, Anakoji, like, is Hirata single? Do you think he'd like me, right? So they seem to be setting something with Michan being, like, Hirata's savior. I'm not really sure. Moving on to the Ichinose scene, this Booty scene call. was pretty much the Booty exact call. same as the LN. So now we move on to the next day. Oh, why, why? You did this! Okay, Honami just skipped. <laughs> Our I mean, the, the whole purpose of this video is cut content, so if nothing was cut, then I guess there's no point, but rip each no say. Where the class has already decided on a target. This scene was pretty much the same, though the scene which did get cut short was the Ayano Koji group conversation. Their conversation was way longer in the light novel, where they discuss about what each of them would do if they were being targeted. And Ki also tells them that it would be smart to join the big group 
if they do get an invitation so they could act as a double agent oh they also see I wonder if he intended for them to act as a double agent. I'm not sure if he said like, yeah, if you get a bigger group invitation, you should go there and be a double agent for me. Or maybe he's like, yeah, you should just go in there. And then he would secretly have them be double agents for him without even realizing. He's outside of the cafe, walking around aimlessly with bags under his eyes. And they all get worried about him and also wonder, why does he care so much about the class? Exactly. Why does he care so much about this shitty class that continues to just disappoint him and just shit on him? I don't understand why Hirata cares so much. Then Kyo actually gets a call from Manabu asking if they can meet up, which booty was call. completely cut in the anime. There was a Manabu booty call scene? What the fuck? They cut out? What? After what did they talk about? After to his group, Kyo goes in to meet with Manabu, All right. who is there together with Tachibana. They first talk about the new special exam, Manabu mentions that lots of first years have tried asking for points from the third years, but <laughs> begging for like the 20 million, you know, cutoffs to like save somebody. Okay. None of them are in a position to able to. Yeah, nobody is rich enough, right? Manabu spent a lot for fucking Tachibana. Only person with that much points is probably Nagumo. Help out because of their final exam, which yeah. is very soon. So Tachibana's only purpose here is to nerf Manabu. Huh? Even right here. Even right here. Tachibana con it continues to be nothing but dead weight for Manabu. Because people can't even ask him for points right now because we waste that shit from Tachibana. I'm being mean on Tachibana. I really am. But like, I have not really seen anything good from her. You know what I mean? Like, what has she really done that was like meaningful and impactful in this show? In season one, she like contested like Manabu's like uh, reference to referral for Ayano Kuchi to join the student council, right? There was a point where Tachibana spoke up and Manabu was like, you dare speak up against me? It's like, oh, okay. That's it. What else did she do? She's dead weight. I can't remember a single positive thing that she's, maybe in the light novel, there's some stuff that she was doing behind the scenes that I'm not being appreciative enough. Tachibana's Manabu's sidekick? No, man. Like, sidekick would be helping, right? I don't even know why Manabu keeps Tachibana around. She's so fucking useless. Straight up, she even self-admits that she's useless. She says that I feel so bad for Manabu. Like, I'm better off expelled. And I honestly think Manabu might be better off being exp like, um, expelling Tachibana. Because then we would at least have a surplus of 20 million points. And now we don't have fuck people fucking up shit for us. Like, Manabu genuinely cares for her, huh? Mental health? Mental health? Your, your argument on Tachibana's usefulness is banked on mental health for Manabu. You don't think that Tachibana getting into these troubles and having Manabu to like rescue her is detrimental for his mental health? No, I don't buy that shit. Dude. If she was useful, then yes, I would completely side with you and say, yes, she's very useful. She may not be like the main character, but she does her job. She covers Manabu's bases and is able to, you know, make his mental health better. But I feel like because she keeps fucking up. Manabu just is the worst time. I mean, I, I, I would just like to think this is horny Manabu. Just like horny Koji doing Ill irrational things to, I don't know, because the gr girls are hot. I would like to believe that Manabu only keeps Tachibana around because he has a crush on her. I don't, I don't fucking know, man. Manabu also mentions that special exams are rotated every three years. So none of the upperclassmen can leak the contents of the... So... There are special exams that are rotated every three years. Special exams. So there, oh, there are other special exams Manabu himself has never experienced yet because of this rotating cycle. And there, I thought it'd be like brand new exams every time. I mean, it might as well be if the students aren't aware of the rotating cycle because they would not be, they would never know, right? But it's interesting that every exam is kind of unique and special. There's no like, question bank that we can kind of just like get from upper years then kyo asks manabu if suzne has tried to ask him for advice yet he also says that suzne is gonna have to make some tough choices during this exam tough and choices someone who can give her advice i think cutting off yamauchi is not a tough choice i think suzne is actually excited to get this motherfucker out i don't think she's forgotten about marikita remember marikita man Yamauchi dumped mud on Horikita in season one. I don't think she forgot that, dude. Just like how Arisu probably holds a grudge for the walking cane incident. Manabu tries to ask Kyo to be that person for her, to which Kyo replies that he and Suzune are very different people, and yeah, the are. only one who can help her during this exam is Man. 
Then they talk about Nagumo and how he's- What was that? Why did he like mute himself and the subs showed up? And the only person that can help himself is- Trust Kyo to be that person for her. Okay. To which Kyo replies that he and Susune are very different people. And the only one who can help her during this exam is, is? Man. Then is Manabu. Okay, his mic just cut off the kid. That was just technical issues. They talk about Nagumo and how he's been acting recently. And Tachibana wondering why Manabu trusts Ayano Koji so much. To which Tachibana asked Manabu, why does Manabu trust Ayano Koji so much? Because he was so good with piano and calligraphy in episode 2. No, that was what gained the initial interest. Then after that, Manabu has been carefully, you know, looking at Anakoji's track records, right? Everything he's done behind the scenes seems to somehow work in class D's favor. Even his shitty little sister is doing a lot better. So I think he has a lot of expectations for Anakoji. Manabu replies that he doesn't even know himself. Now we move on to the call from K, where she tells him about being the class target. In the LN, after his call with K, Kyo actually calls Manabu and tells him about the situation he's in and asks him for a favor. Okay, and that's the meeting on the rooftop. Kyo's plan, Manabu says that Kyo probably would have used the same strategy even if he wasn't being targeted and also thinks that Kyo isn't in danger at all. Oh, so it never really mattered that he was being targeted because no matter what, he would, you know, have that line of now. Horikita, move, right? That was kind of cool. <laughs> I, I do enjoy it when Anakoji, like, he narrates the show sometimes, you know? Like, that line of, like, he's just thinking and he's just looking at Susan and he's like, now, nah, Horikita, move. And she moved, but... So he was never in danger because, ultimately, we're going to use Susan to point out, you know, hey, who's useless here? Let's get him out. After his call with Manabu, instead of meeting up with Kushida, he actually gives her a call and their conversation takes place here. Kushida, I'm. I have a certain weakness towards hot girls that are crazy. I don't really like Kushida that much in season two, but like, he's been pretty helpful. And she's playing her own game. I, I gotta respect the game. And I think that she's doing a pretty damn good job. And part of me doesn't really want her to be expelled anymore. I kind of like the whole chaotic, uh, environment that Kushida brings in. I know that sometimes she'll be willing to backstab us, but as long as we play the game correctly, I feel like she could be a great asset to us. Not just the assets you see on the screen, but it's just, I, I'm, I, I am developing an acquired taste towards Kushida, if you know what I mean. The conversation was mostly the same as the anime, aside from Kushida mentioning that she's being blackmailed because the ringleader knows about her other side. After his conversation, she's being blackmailed because the ringleader knows about her other side. Arisu, Arisu understands. Now, obviously not Yamauchi. <laughs> Yamauchi doesn't know shit. But okay, so I guess the other side is quite the secret that I have kind of forgotten about. Because like, who knows it? Ryuin knows, Ayanokoji knows, Suzune knows, but other than Arisu knows too. But there's like only a select a few people that truly knows the other side, huh? I wonder if like... Koenji has any suspicions? I don't know, because he kind of figured out that Aonokoji defeated Ryuin, right? But, huh, okay. Kushida's other side, of course, it's a big secret. ...with Kushida, Kyo calls Manabu once again and tells him about some more details and parts of his plan, which we don't get to hear. And after his call with Manabu, Kyo wonders just why would Sakayanagi do this after promising that she's gonna postpone their match. Because I think this is intentional! Like, is this her strategy? Because she's done this twice now. She fucking shows up, says that I'm going to take you out. Actually, let's postpone. I got some other shit to do. But that other shit is backstabbing Anakoji. We did this in the mountain arc, right? She said that, oh, my target's Ichinose. And then it's like, psych! He was you all this time. And it's like, oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up. I know that we're, we're going to resume our duel, but I got to... The special exam came up. The special exam. What are you going to do? Come on. Special exam came up. Let's, let's settle our matters after this. And then she fucking backs up again. So it's like, I have to believe that she's intentionally doing this. She, this is her part of her strategy. It's just, just fucking telling us that, oh, the duel is off. Psych, I'm working even harder to get you now. He also thinks that Sakai and Agi isn't the type of person who would be satisfied by stabbing him in the back. I think... <sighs> but she keeps doing it. Coincidence? 
a single time happening like the Ichinoseki. She even fucking admitted the Ichinoseki. That was not in. That was not unintentional. She straight up said Ichinose didn't matter. I just wanted to get your attention, right? You were basically, I just wanted to see how you were going to move. So, like, is she really not a backstabber? Is she really this pure, noble-hearted person? I thought she's a true genius. I thought that she's not a fake genius. And if she's a true genius, she should know about the White Room teachings. Well, she doesn't need to know. I bet she is the fucking Bible that the White Room teachings is based off of, creating the ultimate sociopath. And I'm sure backstabbing and doing this shit is an essential strategy, right? If you want to be all, all fucking evil and shit. Next up, we actually. Ichinose thing was not a backstab. Are you sure? Because he intentionally said that I'm not going for Ichinose anymore. But she was indirectly working to get Aonokoji moving like that. And then she got a quick one at the end. I feel like. She, those are like. Layers, foundations being set to take out Aona Koji. To see, how are you going to react to this? How are you going to move? I'm taking notes right now. So like, he never had, she never had to tell Aona Koji, like, oh, I'm going to take out Ichinose. Our fucking duel is postponed. But then it's like, what? It wasn't really. You were still working on it the entire time. Actually got a Horikita POV chapter, which starts with her getting a message from Manabu asking if... Are you still sure you're, you're not going to have regrets? So... Manabu texted this to Suzune because Anakoji told him to, not because Manabu wanted to. She has any regrets. After which, she actually calls Manabu and asks him if they can meet up in person to talk. To which Manabu straight up says that their relationship was over the moment she rejected. When you enrolled in this school and rejected my proposal that you drop out, our relationship was over. You do understand that, don't you? He asked. This is what I'm talking about. Nissan does not give a fuck about little sister. That was not a wholesome rooftop scene. When bro willingly palm striked his little sister, which is apparently an anime only thing, but still he was very cruel to her, right? He straight up said, my useless sister enrolling at this school and ranking in D class. What a fucking embarrassment it is to the Horikita name. You're making me look bad. Fucking drop out. This is specifically what he's referring to. And she did it. So he's even more upset. He's like, our relationship is over. So it's crazy to think that Manabu Horiki, like Suzune is like redeemed. Like the, the, the relationship is mended. And like, no. Manabu just did it because Aono Koji just, you know, it's, it's his favor, right? And Manabu wants to be good to Koji. His proposal to drop out of school. Just but Kota manages to convince him to meet with her after saying that this will be the very last time she's gonna involve herself with him. Yeah, really? Then we move on really? to the meeting, which was honestly adapted pretty faithfully in the anime. I honestly have no complaints about this scene. Now All we right. finally have the classroom scene to end off the episode. Some small changes during the scene where Yamauchi instantly being He's nervous sweating. as soon as Horikita brought up the topic of He knew immediately. I guess the anime only I I I, I guess this is like an anime only uh, cue to be like Yama God, you might not be so safe after all. Expulsion. And Chabashira and Koenji being the two people who were most impressed by Horikita's reasoning and action. That's right. Koenji was so impressed at Susane's reasoning that he was like, Oh Susane! You're actually using your brain and being logical today. This is a surprise. And I'm like, what an underhanded compliment. Koenji looked particularly happy by this because he was one of the students at risk of expulsion. That's right. He was technically on the line, right? Like he's acting all cool and acting like he doesn't care, but he should be on. He, he, he's definitely at risk. But like because Susan stepped up and now she's going to objectively say, you know, you know, doing a popularity vote might expel a good student, right? And technically on paper, Koenji is a pretty damn good student if you just consider his athletic or academic prowess. Expulsion. As much as he was trying to act tough, and if Horikita followed through with her plan, he would be saved because of his abilities. Yeah. And that is all the cut content for this episode of Classroom of the Elite. Yamagod, you're up next! Despite having cut content, this was easily the best adapted episode so far. But that. But remember, there's a part he's worried about it, right? The pacing of this actually worries Mr. Baseless Upen. Why? It does make me really worried for the next episode. Why? There's an extremely high chance that the next episode will be the one to end off this volume. So because we did 50 pages of adaptation in this one, the next episode is going to be like 250 pages. Which is really concerning because we still have over 120 pages left in this volume. 
Plus, they also need uh -oh. to adapt Hirata's monologue somehow, uh -oh. which is really important for the final parts of this volume. As much as I want to be happy that we got... So basically, there's a good chance that the conclusion of this arc is going to get extremely rushed because of the amount of episodes we have compared to the amount of light novel volume pages we have. Uh oh. A decent episode for once. I'm just even more scared for the conclusion of this volume. Now, all I can do is pray and hope for the best next episode. Just pray, man. If you guys made it until the end of this video, yes, I did. please leave a like on it. Y'all know what to do. Please give Mr. Baseless Yupin a sub to his channel. Like this video if you enjoy his classroom of the elite light novel cut content. He always gives us good summaries on what's going on. And yeah, I felt like last episode was, and, and, and this exam in specific is the most spiciest. I love this shit. It's just like survival games. It's like a popularity. Test. It's not, this game is very simple, right? I, I mean, there's a little bit of added complexity in like other classes being able to vote into other classes, right? But still, it's like a simple popularity vote, like who's going to get survived, who's not. And Aonokoji being casted as like a target was like, whoa, but actually it never mattered because he was going to make Susan a, you know, out the fucking rat in her class. And now, will Yamagod actually survive? I don't know. Maybe this is the moment where we actually expel a student because so far expulsion has been shown, but it was not as lethal as I assumed because in this school, you can do anything with pr uh, private points. You got 20 million points and not some, I believe it's not just private points. I think some people said that some like class points were required anyways. You need a lot of resources to like bring back someone expulsion, right? So that kind of like was like, eh, it's like it's not that important. But maybe now we have a perfect target to get rid of. And if Yamaga survives this dude, if Yamaga actually survives, <sighs> I will admit that he is from the black room.